What's happening, financial coaches? It's Pete here. I want to talk to you today about podcasting. You know that I love podcasting, and podcasting has all sorts of advantages for just keeping you verbal and connected and conversational, even if sometimes you're working alone. Now, I want to talk to you about two things, but I'm going to talk about one of these things in this episode, and that is podcasting alone and why you should podcast alone. And then in another episode, we'll talk about podcasting with people. But why you should podcast alone. One of the big reasons that you should do a podcast by yourself is because you are the expert and you want to showcase that. You want to share with people what your opinions and your take and your assessment of things are. You want to share with people your experiences because you're trying to get financial coaching clients to hire you. If you always have other people on your podcast, that's going to diminish the image that you're the expert, right? If you're always bringing people on who are a budgeting expert or a money management expert or retirement expert, the assumption that I'm going to make as a guest is that maybe you don't know a lot about that. Especially sometimes we have to throw out layup questions, simple questions that we know the answer to. I'm thinking specifically of a friend of mine who runs a podcast about banking. It's a great, successful podcast. And he always has guests from the banking industry on. And the reality is they are always trying to highlight that person, their organization, their strategies. And so a lot of times he's asking them questions that he knows what the obvious answer is. And if you were to listen to this podcast, and I've been listening to it for years, most people don't realize that he is an expert in this industry, even though he is. And behind the scenes, some people know that. But the podcast doesn't really showcase him. It showcases his guests. And so that's a problem if he is trying to present himself as the expert. And in many cases, this is what we're trying to do as financial coaches. We want people to have confidence in our abilities to guide them through their financial life. And if we always have people on that are experts in their respective fields or even, even financial coaches, that's going to give them the exposure and the authority that maybe we're seeking. And so that's why I would recommend podcasting alone. Now, being a good podcaster is something that takes forever to master. Obviously, there are some people with millions of subscribers. I would recommend that you set your expectations a little bit lower. But just going out there and putting yourself out there, recording a message, recording a video, taking the latest financial news headline, personal finance headline, and talking about that can be really helpful to people. If you have a tip or a trick or a strategy that you're using and that you want to share, I wouldn't necessarily come on and just chit chat because that might not be value to people. But if you have something that you want to discuss, something that you would discuss over lunch with someone who is equally enthusiastic about financial independence as you are, then that's probably a good topic for a podcast. And it's going to build you up as the expert. It's going to showcase to your prospective clients and even your existing clients that you know what you're talking about. And that can be a great peace of mind for the people that are looking to hire a financial coach. Well, anyway, that is my big reason why you should podcast alone. And in another episode, I will talk about why you should podcast with other people. I'll see you later.